Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Well, I have your attention. I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. Now, sharing me and uh, you know following me is very, very important because I'm a one-man shop. I am an old man with absolutely no money for any kind of advertising, so social media is how I grow. So please follow me on Twitter, at SYL Tales, and any other social media that you like. I'm on more than you probably know. You can find it on my About page on any channel that I'm connected to. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch store on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. You know, a few years after their initial releases... Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Picard will not be viewed very often, and they will not age well compared to the other incarnations of the franchise. Now, this has nothing to do with good or bad scripting, nor any individual episode, nor an arc. It has to do with the way that these are all put together. It doesn't have also anything to do with the science fiction part of it or, you know, the science that it shows because we know from history the only commonality in all of science fiction is that it always gets the technology wrong. But any or all of those things can be brilliant, but the shows themselves will age badly for an entirely different reason. And that reason is story structure. For thousands of years, for at le from at least the days of the ancient Greeks until the present day, the most popular forms of our media, if they're plays, films, TV, streaming media, whatever, have aged well because they adhere to a four-act story structure. Now, a four-act structure looks something like this. This is a rather crude diagram, but it is uh, how the structure looks. In each of the first acts, the action builds up until it reaches what's called a climax. And each climax in the first three acts is usually slightly higher than the one before it. That is, it's more dramatically important than the preceding act's climax. Act 4 is similar, except that its climax is much higher. It is the culmination of all the events and climaxes that went before it, and it is the most important thing to happen in the entire story. Now, the end of Act 4 will also include a sort of cool-down effect called the denouement, in which all of the loose ends and the story threads are all tied up in a way that leaves the viewer feeling satisfied. Now, if all of this sounds a lot like sex to you, then you go to the head of the class, because that's exactly what it's like. And it's precisely why it's always been such a successful format for thousands of years. Now, this format has worked extremely well for television because each individual climax happens to be right before the commercial, and it'll usually be something that will grab the viewer, keep them through the commercial, and bring them back to the next act at the end of the commercial, and also to keep them watching the commercials because that's always the most important thing in any kind of streaming media or TV. And now this has made everything from Star Trek the original series through Star Trek Enterprise extremely durable. A viewer can watch any given episode and walk away feeling satisfied. It's the same for the original series, all of the films, most of Next Gen, they were all, you know, generally what we call one and done shows. Now that means that there are, while, may, while there may be some character development that goes through the episodes, the plot of one story really has little to do with the plot of another, unless you've got a, sort of a sequel story to the first one. So, from the tail end of the next generation on, they began using story arcs. And while each individual story was still one and done in terms of its plot, each episode would then contribute to an overarching arc that would usually be resolved by the end of the season, or in some cases by the end of the series. Viewers could still watch an episode and feel satisfied because of that story structure, but they didn't have to watch you know, need to watch the entire season in order to get the arc. They, if they wanted to, they certainly could, but they didn't have to watch the episode in order to feel satisfied. So let's compare this with the story, our story structures used by Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Voyager. I'm not Voyager, but Star Trek uh, Picard. 
This is the story structure used by it. It is radically different from the four-act structure. It is essentially a ten-part story in which the tension gradually builds from one episode to the next until you finally have a climax at the end of episode ten. Now, furthermore, there may be no denouement, as we can see in Star Trek Discovery. Season two had a clear climax, but left us on a cliffhanger as to what would happen in season three. Now, there may be individual acts in any given episode, but they don't really conform to the four-act structure. They exist solely to add tension to the plot that builds up to the final and only climax in episode 10. Star Trek Discovery and Picard's story arcs have far more in common, frankly, with Flash Gordon serials, or serials at all of the 1930s, with one exception. Neither Picard nor uh, Discovery have episodes that end on a dramatic cliffhanger that's there solely to draw the audience back to the movie theater every year. But each episode is a uh, full hour long also, rather than simply 15 to 20 minutes. If you don't have a payoff, 15 to 20 minutes is kind of okay, but an entire hour without any kind of climax is problematic. Now, this also means the viewer cannot watch a single episode and walk away feeling satisfied. In fact, if you don't watch the, every single episode in the correct order, you will be mystified as to what the story is about. And indeed, from the perspective of feeling satisfied, it is best to allow the entire season to drop and then binge watch it. Because you'll be more likely to be satisfied by an ending at the entire story rather than being pointlessly guessing for every single week. You can at least watch the whole thing in 10 hours and not have to sit and wait an entire week in between them. And this is why Discovery and Picard will not age well. The one-and-done story arcs are more accessible to viewers. 20 years in the future, who, who's going to have the nostalgia that's going to drive watching this particular these particular shows because let's make make it really clear make no mistake nostalgia is what drives almost every incarnation of Star Trek particularly Star Trek Picard now Justice Star Trek the Next Generation was a show that was made for star fans of Star Trek the original series Star Trek Picard is a show made for fans of Star Trek the Next Generation and as far as I can tell, Star Trek Discovery isn't for fans of the show at all. It's for people who are incapable of looking past the dated technology that was available in the 1960s and what our expectations were in the 1960s and how Star Trek, the original series, got the future wrong, as all science fiction always does. It is the only commonality in science fiction. They always get the tech wrong. And in 20 years, maybe even 10, people are going to look back at Discovery and Picard and laugh at how stupid, fake, and hokey it looks and how they got the future completely wrong, because they will. But without nostalgia, who's going to watch Discovery and Picard in 20 years? Who will sit through 10 entire hours of building a plot with no payoff until the end of the 10 hours? Who will watch an individual episode with no four-act structure to make the episode seem emotionally satisfying. Well, very few people, that's who. Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Picard will not age well for the simple fact that they do not adhere to a four-act structure inside the episodes. This has been successful for thousands of years, at least since the Greeks, and quite possibly long before that. While there have been some attempts over the thousands of years to stray from this structure, these attempts are largely completely lost to history for the same reason that Picard and Discovery are likely to be lost. Because without the four-act structure, the story becomes lengthy, um, uh, unengaging, and just a ten-hour story, and you have to catch every single episode in the correct order in order to finally come to a climax at the end of episode ten. The four-act structure doesn't doesn't suffer from this obvious problem. It's why this, and they've remained very successful throughout all of human history. They're like sex, and putting it in that way makes it successful. Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Picard simply won't age well. And that's all I have to say about that. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have right now for this episode of Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone.
Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.